Hello and welcome to C64 Code Hacking. This is Slotty Bartfast and I'm not associated with any scene group at all anymore. Hmm. In this episode, which may be a bit long-winded compared to my normal uh, episodes, I'd like to ramble and have a bit of a rant on the progress of the C64 Code Hacking projects and the future of them. Now, most of you, my subscribers and viewers, probably have no idea whatsoever that I've gone through quite a bit of drama with the Commodore 64 scene originating from CSDB and from the Lemon 64 community. Now, the reason I say that most of you probably haven't heard of that drama is because these are very closed off communities and generally don't interact with the wider retro community at all. Now, I'm aiming these projects at the wider retro community, not at CSDB, Commodore 64 seniors, or the Lemon 64 community, because they're toxic communities, uh, because they go widely without moderation, and uh, are just a lovely place for trolls to hang out and, and insult makers of Commodore 64 software and, and whatever. It's been most disappointing. But for those of you that do know what went on, I'd just like to point out that the people that were attacking me and trolling me were people that I knew more than a decade ago in the scene who had de decade-long grudges and this was proven by the most recent Lemon64 release threads. They were only trolled by two Lemon64 users. One who had registered that day to troll me from the, scene, from the scene database. And the other, Wildstar, aka Rick Balkins, was a victim of my trolling on C64 Friends more than a decade ago when I was substantially less mature. And I, I had a lot of fun trolling idiots on a stupid channel. Uh, I apologise for my part in that. And I thought it was in the past, but unfortunately some people have long memories. It's ridiculous, really. Now, I've been banned from CSDB, and I won't be going back to Lemon64, which has virtually no moderation and is a troll's paradise. The one moderator who seems to be active on the forum, Mayhem, who I might point out is uh, well known in the community as someone who produces a lot for the community, apparently, and has been involved in games that weren't releases among other things. He simply closes my release threads containing all the bile and hate from the trolls and refuses to delete the threads or ban seniors who have registered just to troll me. It makes the whole situation worse. Now I've lost friends, well close associates, over the CSDB drama and one of my interviews on the Zero Earth issue of Inc. DO2O, Lassie Orni, or Kadeva, has denied Future Vision Designs the right to distribute his freeware under our freebies label. Now he has no legal right whatsoever to enforce that wish, but as I, as I wish to reduce the drama generated by that faction of the C64 community, the only freeware we will distribute on the C64 platform is what we're given permission to distribute. And we have a load of freeware on all 8-bit platforms for distribution under our freebies label. We won't have those same problems on Spectrum and Amstrad platforms because uh, those communities are quite mature and believe in proper licensing for their products. Inc. DO2 also generated its fair share of drama due to my shocking decision to charge $1.99 US for a 68 page magazine. There will be one final edit as I'm removing Cadaver's interview from the magazine because I will not promote haters in my projects. It's a shame because I respect the guy, but if he's willing to allow a cracked version of Hessian, his latest commercial game, to be distributed on, on, on CSDB and won't allow my company to redistribute his freeware, which is widely available, then respect for him or not, he can go to hell. Now CSDB, or the Commodore scene drama base that is, as it is well known as, is a den of stinking communist scumbags and I make no apologies for that statement. It's not exactly their fault as it is at the height of the C64 scene, about one quarter of the European scene lived in, Euro in communist countries or nearby them. And this influence is still known in the community. It's not right in 2016, in my opinion, to harass those that are simply trying to make a living from their hobby, and it is not right to attack people as being unethical for charging a small amount for their services. The C64 in 2016, 2016 is bigger than the closed-off communities of CSDB and Lemon64, 
and it is the larger retro community that I'm aiming for. My mission is to get more people developing games and software for the Commodore 64 in 2017 and for them to see some financial compensation for their efforts. And to also expand the, the, the Commodore 64 development scene to a much wider range of people so we'll see more original games and more productions and less CS to be interference with these productions. Now, if you believe hardware makers on the Commodore 64 deserve, deserve financial reward for their efforts, and most of you do, because you'll pay uh, more than $200 for a cartridge, but believe all oh, Commodore 64 so software and magazines should be free, then you're a dirty, stinking communist, and you're not our target market. I make no apologies for this statement, and I'll be writing an article along these lines very soon, or releasing one, it's already written. Now, I suspect the majority of my subscribers and viewers have no idea about the Commodore scene drama base, all the recent attacks against me in the C64 scene and Lemus 64 community. But I just had to set the record straight. The drama has now blown over, and I think my work in 2017 will speak for itself. All of that aside, I have some big news for the, about the Commodore 64 code hacking projects to share with you now. We've submitted our Kickstarter campaign for Future Vision Design's 8-bit digital game publishing house to Kickstarter for review, and I think you'll agree when you see it that the goal is very realistic and the pledge tiers are very reasonable. For instance, for just the $1 sympathizer pledge, you'll get your name in the credits of the company intro, a free copy of the Zeroth issue of Ink Do 2 and a free copy of our upcoming Seek Redux at Magnum Opus, Breakfast at Milliways. Of course, because I'm slightly Bartfast, I like all my projects to be dedicated to Douglas Adams' work, and Breakfast at Milliways will be an unofficial sequel to the modern Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy movie, where you, as Zephyr Beagle Rocks, must fight your way to the breakfast at Milliways, the restaurant at the end of the universe. We'll also be launching another magazine in the coming months, Game Overview, a retro gaming magazine ded dedicated to all platforms, and named after my mate James C64 Disc Mag of the same name. If you want to review your favourite games on whatever retro platform and see your name in print, please get in touch uh, through my Facebook pages, or the group. I'll be getting a webcam this week, and expanding this channel to be more social with a new series, Geeky Pickups, inspired by my random Facebook friend, Alyssa White's channel, where I'll show you all the geeky things I've bought that month, as I've made a New Year's resolution to spend my money on things that matter to me and that I can keep for the long term, rather than just let it go up in a puff of smoke, if you know what I mean. And if you don't want to know what I mean, good! <laughs> in other news, the announcement of Future Vision Design's 8-bit digital game publishing house has already attracted one talented C64 game developer who has tentatively offered, tentatively, tentatively offered three of his games from publishing in 2017. It's still early days, but I think you'll agree this is an exciting development. We're on the lookout for talented game designers, coders, graphic artists and musicians on all 8-bit platforms to join the Future Vision team, and we'll be actively recruiting during the Kickstarter campaign. And finally, huge news, the Future Vision Design's C C Commodore 64 in-house development team has made the first steps towards its first commercial development contract with a contemporary Houston company who are most well known for their classic in incarnation as the publisher of Andrew Braybrook's games, among others. I will be developing a tech demo of a game engine in the next three weeks that will eventually power the conversion of Andrew Houston's Hypersentinel game it's being released on iOS and consoles. And if Rob Houston, son of the legendary Andrew, Andrew Houston, likes it, we will score a two-month part-time development contract, and let's just say we will be financially compensated for our efforts. Well, that's all I have to say for this episode. Apologies again for any drama you may have witnessed, but that's all I've ever done with now. And if you've watched this video to the end, you're a true supporter of the project, and I thank you. And just feel... Uh, not, just, just feel good that you didn't have to listen to the two 20 minute versions I made of this episode where I just rambled on uh, incoherently and the microphone didn't work. So, just be glad you didn't have to sit through 20 minutes of this. If you'd like to support the project in other ways, please share my videos, buy my overpriced merchandise, buy my magazines, uh, consider becoming a patron of the project because you'll get support directly from me and source code that is commented and spread the word that there's a new way to learn coding on the Commodore 64. And check out the Commodore 64 code hacking blog if you're after more advanced or intermediate uh, tutorials because there I share source code to, and snippets to my old intro parts and demos 
and I just released the full source code to this intro that is on the Future Vision Designs homepage. If you go to the homepage, you'll see me do some silly things with uh, recording a video like this. Hello world and welcome, you know, this is a bit of a joke, I was a bit bored. Uh, and you'll see the intro itself. So thanks for bearing with me and thank you all for subscribing, for joining my close Facebook group which now has over 700 members in three weeks, uh, for liking my pages, for reading the blog and for supporting me in, in any which way you have. So it's goodbye from me and hello to code. Good afternoon. Let's watch the intro. No, you can now record video from Vice using Windows 10. You just have to press Windows G and it records it. Thanks for sticking with me, and thanks for listening to this rambling, ranting episode of C64 Code Hacking. We'll be going into source code and more advanced tutorials next week with the release of a full series on Suic Redux and how to make your own total screens and enhancements for the Suic Redux engine. Stay tuned, and again, it's goodbye from me, and hello to code. Good afternoon.